Hey guys, it's Adam. Welcome back to another video on what's new in Mix Effect. Today we're going to talk about Mix Effect 1.9.0. So let's get started. Um, this is a minor release in terms of features, but there's been a lot of under the hood improvements, starting with shortcuts. So in iOS 16, Apple introduced a new way to implement shortcuts called app intents. Previously, they were called Siri kit intents. So I spent uh, the past several weeks and months converting all 133, actually almost 133 actions from the old intent style to the new intent style. Uh, and we're going to go into some of the features and benefits of switching to app intents. There are a few remaining iOS 15 intents. You won't notice anything different when you use them. They just work as they have before. Uh, finally, I've deprecated and marked as vintage some old intents. So those are going away uh, in a future version of Mix Effect. First, let's talk about uh, what app intents and categories and what app intents give you. So the first thing is it gives faster performance. The second thing is uh, categorization. Now I'm able to categorize the intents that you see in the shortcuts application. So now if you go to the Mix Effect section, you'll see uh, all the actions kind of organized. Now there are some set of actions that you can't organize, kind of like the ones that I'm going to go into in a second called the uh, predicate filtering actions. So those will remain at the top, but everything else from like automation, the upstream keyer, to the switcher, to transitions, to the uh, downstream keyer, all those are nicely organized. So it's going to be a lot easier for you to find the action that you want. And app intents are built for iOS 16 and beyond. And as you know, we're just less than a week away before Apple's WWDC 2023 conference. And so who knows what's going to be coming out in iOS and iPadOS 17. Now, let's take a look at the predicate filtering actions. So we have new actions for find macro, find media clip, find media still, find streaming server, find streaming service, find super source preset, and find switcher. And what predicate filtering allows you to do is allows you to search for different query parameters. You can search for all or any. So you can do search for like, show me all the super source presets that start with the word uh, for and have the tag uh, in the notes field default. And that will pull all your super source presets um, that match those criteria. You can, again, all or any. And then you can sort those return values by various uh, parameters like sort by name, if you're looking at macros, you can maybe sort by color um, or the notes field. And finally, you can also limit the number of searches, the limit of search results that are returned to you. So if you only want to find five super source presets that begin with the uh, word four, you can definitely do that. So I'd encourage you to take a look at these new predicate filtering actions in Mix Effect 1.9.0. Now, there's a brand new action that works on both iOS 15 and iOS 16 devices called send BMD Ethernet protocol command. And this replaces a couple commands, which I'm going to go into into the next slide. But what this command can do is it can send a command to a Blackmagic device that supports the Ethernet protocol. So some of the devices that support that are ATEM switchers, HyperDEX, the MultiView product, Video Hubs, Ultimat, and Web Presenters. So I used to have a series of three actions that send commands to either the ATEM, a web presenter, and the HyperDeck. And if you knew uh, the right port number, you could use those actions to send commands to like other devices. But now I've consolidated all those into one action, send BMD Ethernet protocol command, and you can send commands to those devices. And in this example that we have here, we're sending um, to a, an ATEM switcher at IP address 10.0.1.52, video output routing command 018. And what that's actually doing is saying change auxiliary output zero, which is auxiliary output one to input 18, which happens to be on the ATEM mini extreme ISO, the multi-view. So if I ran this shortcut, it will turn the aux one output into multi-view. Here's another example of using the send BMD ethernet protocol command action in shortcuts. Get ATEM MAC address. I uh, see a lot of, uh, not a lot, but occasionally I see a post from someone who needs to get the MAC address of their ATEM switcher. And what you can do, you can run this quick shortcut. Just give the IP address of the ATEM switcher, which you should probably know, and it'll return the MAC address. And then maybe with the MAC address, you can put that in the router to assign it a, 
uh, a DHCP, a static DHCP uh, address by using its MAC address. And what this shortcut will do, it will copy the MAC address right to your clipboard. You can get this shortcut by just going to HTTPS mixeffect.app slash shortcuts slash get dash atem dash MAC dash address. All right, there's some remaining iOS 15 style intents which have not been converted to app intents. And those are the ATEM network interface details, the get ATEM setup details, and the set streaming settings details. And the reason why these haven't been converted is because app intents don't support all the features that the older style Siri kit intents did. Maybe in iOS 17, uh, Apple will fix this. We'll see in less than a week. There's a few deprecated and vin marked as vintage intents. So the ones that have been deprecated are the send ATEM setup command, the send web presenter command, and the send hyperdeck command. So instead, use the send BMD Ethernet protocol command action. Finally, there's some vintage intents that have been marked as vintage, which means they're going to be deprecated in the future. And that's the get macros, get media clips, get my streaming services, get my switchers, and get super source presets. And use the predicate filtering actions, the find corresponding find macro, find media clip, find streaming service, streaming switcher, um, streaming server, um, switcher, and super source presets instead. All right, the next feature is OSC and HTTP server status. This is a very useful one for people we're trying to connect MixEffect to Companion. So new in Companion 3.0 is an upgraded MixEffect module, which brings feedback support. And I frequently hear um, or feel reports from people who are having trouble kind of connecting Companion uh, to MixEffect. So this hopefully will, will help you in that regard. So when you see a green dot next to the OSC server or the HTTP server, that means your OSC server or HTTP server are running just fine. If you a red dot, that means they're disconnected for some reason. If you see an orange dot, it means it might be running or might have some problems. So a common problem that people might have is that they have multiple versions of MixEffect running on their iPad or their Mac that are both trying to turn on the OSC server um, to the same port or the HTTP server to the same port. Maybe you have MixEffect free to download and with the Pro upgrade, and you have MixEffect Pro. Whatever reason, you have both versions of MixEffect. I happen to be running MixEffect and MixEffect Pro on my device. Sometimes if I have them running side by side and they're connected to the same switcher, one of the servers might not work and that might cause the other servers not to work. And then I push my companion buttons and nothing happens. So what I have to find out is that, oh, okay, I see that uh, one of the servers is orange or it's red. So I have to like get rid of, uh, force quit one of the mix effects and then everything is working. But now you have a visual indication of the health of your OSC and HTTP server. So I encourage you to take a look at that, and hopefully that will help you get that companion, those companion buttons working. Uh, we have a new feature, which is the use custom back button. And the way I can describe this is that it works around a bug in Swift UI, where sometimes when you're navigating to a page or sub page in either the automations, audio details, media details, or switcher setting views, then you multitask and go to another app. Uh, sometimes you'll see MixEffect switch back to the previous navigation section. And what better way than to talk about it and to show you is to demonstrate this. So switch over to the iPad. So I have it, uh, the feature turned off right now, and I'm going to go into uh, master details. And it looks like this. And now I'm going to multitask and go into shortcuts. And you see how it switched back to the uh, audio section name page. So now I'm going to turn on that setting, which is the use custom back buttons. And I'm going to go back to the audio, back to the master details. Looks the same. And I'm going to bring up shortcuts. And you see that it stays on the master details uh, source page. And I can go to equalizer dynamics, and it will stay on that page when I do my multitasking. So the downside to this is that you lose the ability to swipe back. So if you're on like an uh, iPhone, um, you might be able to use your thumb to swipe back. Now you actually have to hit the little button right up there, the audio button to go back to the main page. So a small price to pay. Uh, I might refactor the way navigation is done in MixEffect, but for right now, 
that's kind of how the system works. So uh, if you find yourself uh, f seeing this like weird navigation bug, uh, turn on use custom back buttons and see if that, that helps. All right, bug fixes. Let's go through this. Uh, there's a bunch of them. Uh, the streaming header disappears in the navigation sidebar when no switcher is connected. I don't know if many of you have seen this, but it was like a blank space. I just noticed this and I was like, what the heck is this? So I fixed that. Um, address some crashing issues when you tap on the HyperDeck uh, menu item in the switcher settings. Um, sometimes if you had the Pro Unlock in MixFX, the free to download with a 30-day trial, and then you bought the Pro Unlock, but you went to uh, stream settings, live stream settings, you'd see the uh, buttons for like import and export had lock and so i fixed that uh website links and settings go to either mix effect dot app or mix effect pro dot app depending on which version of mix effect that you're running and i fixed the bug that prevented the chroma preview sample button from actually uh, from being able to be turned off when you turn it on you weren't able to turn it off and now you can turn it off uh, and that's a result actually of some under the hood improvements i've made to the underlying kind of ATEM Blackmagic to mix effect protocol, uh, which will help in the future implement some exciting new features. Okay, so what's coming up next? That's all that's in mix effect 1.9.0. Uh, not a lot of user facing features, but a lot of under the hood improvements. So what's coming up next? Again, next week is Apple's WWDC conference. We're gonna see the future of iOS 17 and iPadOS 17 along with macOS 14. And there may be some new features that uh, I want to incorporate into Mix Effect. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Finally, Blackmagic recently announced and released uh, two new switchers, the ATEM Television Studio 4K8 and the ATEM 4ME Broadcast Studio 4K. Now, I don't have a loaner yet from Blackmagic. So I haven't been able to upgrade Mix Effect to support these two new switchers. But rest assured, uh, within uh, the next few weeks, I hope to get a loaner or at least get the information I need to add support. So look for that in Mix Effect 1.9.1 1. uh, in a few weeks. At any rate, that's all that's new in Mix Effect 1.9.0. Hope you've enjoyed this. Happy switching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.